Yeah. Now, before we move to what we typically call our suesos, uh, Ben, you don't have to reply to any of this. I'm going to get on a little bit of soapbox here. And I'd actually prefer if you didn't respond to any of this because two reasons. Number one, you weren't at the con. And number two, you work for CFI. <laughs> so um, I don't work for CFI except for a few freelance illustrations here and there. And I'm a, I'm a free agent and I paid for my admission to the con. So I criticize out of respect and out of hope that things will always get better and skepticism will become more and more popular. Uh, unfortunately, the opening remarks hit a sour note when uh, Robin Bloomer, who's the head of CFI, brought up pretty immediately a an issue uh, of transgender and trans sex. Now, I'm not a biologist or a geneticist, but I am a professional communicator. And if your two messages at the start of a conference are, number one, we need new skeptics. We need to reach the next generation. Uh, we need to be relevant to the young people. And then your other message is, a trans woman is just a man in a dress, then you're going to have a problem. And it's I think it's even deeper than a messaging problem. So some people left uh, when that statement was made. I did not walk out and I did not see two other skeptics I know who have trans children walk out. We all stayed. And we are in this weird place where we feel awkward being around that sort of statement, but we would feel unable to push back if we didn't sit there and hear exactly what was said and how it all played out. Now, Dawkins repeated this uh, trans targeting message later in, the, in his talk on the poetry of science, and he made a few points. He said that intersex people were minuscule, a tiny molehill, that was his word, a molehill of 0.004% of the population. Well, that's still 80,000 people in America. And you know what? Atheists are very much a molehill too. If we're deciding things based on majorities, then atheists don't really have a leg to stand on. He showed a photograph of a trans female swimmer next to a smaller cis female swimmer. And because I work you know, with media stuff, I have to look through a lot of newspapers. And I know that image because it's been used for so much propaganda and really far right opinion pieces, including some really vile cartoons depicting trans athletes as monsters. So I was disheartened to see that photograph even used because it just automatically politicizes things. And we can discuss what should be used to categorize people for sports competitions. Like, do we go on the basis of the genitals only uh, or chromosomes or hormone levels? Or I mean, because th those those could give you a, a different answer <laughs> for the same person? Uh, or do we just go to wrestling rules and have the size and weight divisions for every sport? Th these are nuances that Dawkins did not bring up, however. He insisted also that being trans was comparable to the Catholic notion of transubstantiation, where you say magic words over some wine and bread, and it turns it into blood and uh, flesh. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm a big fan of metaphors, and I think this one just failed. Um, if he, as a biologist, is upset that terminology is drifting, fine. A, a lot of boomers can't get over the fact that it's just one space after a period, not two. <laughs> so language is changing, and you can't stop that. And if adding the word cis to man or woman in order to clarify certain anatomical or genetic features is just too heavy of a lift, I mean, come on, it's three letters. I sat there, I gave this a lot of thought, and I talked to people about it. I ruminated on who this particular stance could possibly be helping. Humanism, at its core, is about helping other people. Dawkins helped a lot of atheists come out of the closet and, he, and be more comfortable with their lack of belief and understand a lot about evolution. And he helped a lot of people find beauty in science, and he still is. But I'm trying to reckon with Okay, this insistence on the purity of language when it comes to man versus woman, male versus female, who does this help? Are there thousands of misguided trans men who are confused when their period comes? Or are there trans women ignoring signs of testicular cancer because they don't understand their own biology? I mean, I, mean, I haven't heard of this happening. Maybe Richard Dawkins has some information. I don't know. But Dawkins and CSI are kind of inextricably linked. Uh, CFI is subsumed under the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science. So I do kind of worry about the future of this particular skeptical convention. 
I know people who have dropped away over the years. And I, I knew people who boycotted this year for what they view as political statements, things that Dawkins categorizes as statements on biology, but are taken as political. And I spoke with like a dozen people at the convention like last week who were some range of very angry, sad, offended, or just confused by it. And he's not exactly a beginner at scientific communication. So if his point is not a political one, he, he did describe himself as always a lifelong liberal, yet it's coming off as a really far right anti-trans statement that, come on, communicate better, explain whatever nuance the audience is missing, or learn whatever nuance you're missing. And that's about all I have to say about that. Uh, I, I do care about institutions and organizations that have been built around skepticism. And the JREF is, is no more. The amazing meeting is no more. And I hope CFI has a long future ahead of it. I'm just hoping it's not going to be one where I look around the room and think, oh, I'm surrounded by only right-wing anti-trans people. Anyway, on to what we call the Suesos. Ben, 